So we have a couple of days, it's supposed to be three or four days even, of really inclement weather. I thought I'd try to find some little things I could do to get prepped up for this restoration. Now, mirrors are going to be part of this restoration, and one of the things that I learned, and I learned it the hard way, over the last summer, is how important it was for me to have mirrors that I could see out the back of. Now, not mirrors. This is not really a sport bike. It's not made to look all cool and pretty and, and impractical and uncomfortable. I'm trying to go in the other direction, but having the mirrors that work for me, and they're very inexpensive, between $10 and $15 a set, so... You really, this is not a big expensive modification. And as I retrofitted the bikes one by one and moved mirrors around, I call it playing musical mirrors, what I learned is every time I took one of the motorcycles and made an upgrade to the mirrors, I wanted to go upgrade the rest of the bikes. And over the course of the summer, I've done it, I've played musical mirrors all summer. Now I learned another thing that's really important, this is only for me, that having, a, having the mirrors mounted to the handlebars not to the fairing, worked a lot better for me. Now, it may be different for you. You may be a lot younger. Your neck is more rubbery. But I like, without having to move my head back and forth, side to side, being able to see what's behind me. And what started all this, of course, was I was riding a GSI. I had gone through a couple of weeks of therapy for my back, and I really couldn't move my neck conveniently, and so I was riding a GS a lot. And I found... Gee, I said, gee, that's so nice and comfortable. I really like that. I put some mirrors that Luciano gave me that were real RD mirrors, but I couldn't adjust them to the, the comfort that I wanted. They were not really fully adjustable. And right now, I'm waiting for a set of mirrors to come for this bike that will be a perfect match. I swapped the original mirrors out, the ones that came with the bike, to a set that was different. And then I swapped those out to these that are just a little bit wider, maybe a half an inch or so wider. And every time I can get these mirrors, see now, because I can't get these onto the handlebars, these are mounted to the fairing. So it's very, very difficult. Mirrors that mount, they make these two ways, basically the same mirror. They mount to the fairing or they mount to the handlebars. Well, the ones that mount to the handlebars just seem to be a little further out. So you just get a little bit better vision, and for me, that's worth its weight in gold. Now I know this is pretty funny. Aaron was here the other night. He stopped by for a quick visit, showed me the mirrors, the double take mirrors, and I had, I hadn't done the test yet. I had four mirrors on this bike. If you go back to the video before this, and what I did, I took a quick ride to see just how much better the ones on the bar was to the ones in the fairing. They were they were much better for me for my personal needs. So what I did, I came home and I made a set of block-off plates. And the block-off plates just allow me the option of going back, taking the mirrors, which on this bike, they have an, an ability to screw right into the, the controls. Well, it's going to allow me, if I ever want to go back, if I ever want to do an evil twin with this bike, and I've made, I've made these plates, similar plates. I've made them, actually, I made them for this bike, too. And we have a video of making those block off plates. Relatively easy to do. Pretty simple. In fact, we got them on a spike too. Sometimes I forget just how many of these little and these little doodad odds and ends things you make. <laughs> you forget you even made them. Now for me, this is nothing better. I have had four or five different sets of mirrors that were fairing mounted, but I've never found any. These are the ones. They're, they're about 12, I think these were $12 a set. They're all the same though, I don't know. There must be one company in China that, that spits these out, I don't know. And now they come without the name of who made them on the back, so you know that, you know they're bootlegs of bootlegs. It's really funny. But here's the thing, when you're sitting on a motorcycle and riding it, and this is the most important thing to me. You look at and you can see, oh my God, the cops are behind me. Oh, the, the, the IRS is behind me. Oh, my wife's checking it up on me, or whatever. Well, having those mirrors that you can see out the back comfortably, that's worth its weight in gold to me. So one of the final things of playing musical mirrors is what I do. I wait for a day that I can't ride because of personal things or weather-related, and today is both. And then I work on one set of mirrors at a time, and that seems to work pretty well for me. But before we actually get started on the 650 restoration project, I wanted to have all the mirrors painted. See, what I do, I, before I start a big project, I like to get all the little projects out of the way. 
And by the way, I have a couple of parts coming for this bike more. Now, here's a funny thing. And I know people that follow along with this, they're going to laugh. But when I bought the bike, of course, I never realized. And it had right here, it had a sticker, a plastic sticker that said R1. And I never liked the way that looked. I, in fact, I took it off right away. But I've grown to like these, these three-dimensional stickers. So I ordered an extra one. I'm going to see how I like it. If I don't like it, the good news is it can come right off. But the biggest thing here, I have mirrors to paint. And see, these original ones, they have this writing, like, who made them? That This is absolutely crazy. The, the ones I just got have no writing on them. <laughs> They're even cheaper than these. It's unbelievable. The, the set I just got, actually, I got them off eBay for $9. And I, how bad can they be? They're all made in China. Same thing. And what's really nice, this set of mirrors, I guess because of the shape, they're about a half inch further out. And you would think a half inch isn't going to make a lot of difference. When you go for a ride, sometimes what's in that last half inch is what you really want to see. But what always spoils me and always brings me back to reality, and when I go through the pitching rotation and I take a ride on a GS, then I realize how many things about this bike that... They're just having the mirrors that you can see out the back of. It's just, you would think, well, that wouldn't be a big deal. But I've gone through so many mirrors that were maybes, that were wannabes, that were almost. But the GS mirrors, those are the ones that came with the bike. <laughs> and they're still the best mirrors around. And the best one of all, on the FZR restoration, I spent so much time trying to get the mirrors right. And it, it's one of the things that made this restoration even more enjoyable because when I had the old mirrors on and I originally had them mounted to the fairing, they, they were useless. Uh, you know, you took, you look at your elbow for 45 minutes. And not long ago I rode, I don't remember, one of Luciano's bikes, I think it was the green one, that had low mounted mirrors and I just said, oh, it, it works for a lot of young people, it doesn't work for me. So now I wanted to explain that because there was a lot of people, maybe that they've never even given any thought. They have mirrors that aren't that good and they just live with it. Well, there are, for under $15, you can upgrade to any choice of, uh, and there are so many. I get them off Amazon or off eBay. It doesn't really matter. But one of the things is I do like, and it's my personal thing, I like black, shiny. You can see there, you can see the reflection on it. Well, I like that a lot better than this, where, oh my God, you can't see anything. Well, so one by one, we're going to be painting these mirrors. And today, because it's a rainy day, I'll get started on one set. But I only like to really do one or maybe two sets at a time, even though I have I have three, four, I have six mirrors to paint all together. So I'll get started on one set today. Now, there's a couple of things that I've learned over the years about painting mirrors and especially mirrors that are old, older plastic. Plastic formulas from 20 years ago, 30 years ago. An example, Honda 750 side covers. When you put anything with lack of thinners on them, you run the risk they're going to melt. Oh, so urethane thinner sometimes melts it. Sometimes primer melts it. You never know. So th there's always the thing to remember is to get this so you can have a finish that you can paint. I like to just sand it and try not to gouge it and scratch it any more than you have to. In other words, you don't want to use 80 grit sandpaper and a power sander. That's, that's not a good thing. Also, I want to turn around here for a second. I've learned that when you mask this off, this glass, if you call it glass, the stuff that comes from China is very prone to scratching. It must be a very low grade glass. Now I carry this around with me to wipe fingerprints off while I'm working on this stuff. But one of the things, if you mask this and you take your fingernail, I, I wish I had some fingernails, and I can get my fingernail right in there, I can get a pretty nice edge on the finished product, the fingernail. If you take a razor and you go in this dimension, straight up and down, if you go this way, the edge seems to be a lot more ripply than if you can catch it right here with a number 11 X-Acto knife, or even better, your fingernail. So that's... These are little things that you learn over the years before, and I would say this, before you, anybody paints any plastic parts, do a little test on a, spot, on a part you can't see. Because one of the things you can do to protect yourself is use primer sealer. Once you, once you scuff this up a little bit, use primer sealer. Not primer, primer sealer. 
and that'll kind of stack the deck that your plastic parts are not going to melt. Now, unrelated to the mirrors, but just to catch up on the people that are following along, I've been making sketches and looking at different things that I want to do to this bike when I do the restoration. It's going to be 11 years old. It's in need of uh, refreshing. But I thought one of the things that would make this bike a little unique is to make a carbon fiber piece that would fill in this area here. And I, you wouldn't have to see what's going on in there. And I made a little pattern, so as I'm sketching it out, and I even thought I could attach it as one of the choices, attach it to the bottom of this piece, add a piece to it, and then cover the whole piece with twill carbon fiber. That might add a nice look, I don't know. But because it's a rainy day, I want to use the day to get the mirrors primed if I can. And I often thought of an invention that I, I haven't invented, but somebody that's really creative and entrepreneurial could make an invention that would work for all sport bikes. And it would be a mirror that when you park your bike and all your your friends are going to oogle it, you could like like telescope it in. So it would be two or three inches further in here. The same way a, uh, a selfie stick folds in. And then now we're going to go for a real ride where you really want to see what's behind you. You can go click, 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 and it's out where it might not be as attractive, but, you know, God forbid, you should be able to see the, uh, the state police chasing you or see if they have the lights on or whatever. But some kind of telescoping mirror for sport bikes. Yeah, I wish somebody, hey, these guys in China. And it's funny, too. When I buy this stuff from China, there's a guy that I can't read. He doesn't even have a name. It's not a name I recognize. But he always says, how do you like my products? And, and I always answer the email. Yeah, it worked out good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Is there any product I should make? Well, I would have sent them an email and come up with some kind of a telescoping mirror. I don't know. At those things Aaron had on his GS, by the way, as, we, as I'm spending this day talking about mirrors, this is a very funny thing. They, they kind of look a little heavy duty to me, but they probably really, really work, those double take mirrors. That's all, I think that's on the video just before this. Anyway, it's a mirror day. It's a rainy day. I thought I'd get this part of the job out of the way. Because I always like to explain what's my motive in doing some of these things. A lot of times people think you just do them just because you have nothing else to do or you've drank, you had all the coffee for the day. Well, sometimes I get an idea in the middle of the night and I just can't, what am I going to do about that? But those telescope and mirrors, boy, that would be, set. Rizoma even could make something like that. That'd be great. Because I know everybody wants to have the mirrors all tucked in when you're showing your bike off and everybody's drinking coffee. But then you go out on the real road and you want to ride the bike. Ah! It's, it's Another thing. Wouldn't it be great if you could have a seat, a sport bike seat? How great are these ideas? It, it's all nice and low. You know how the low riders are? Yeah, and you sit real low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, it, it, when it's sitting in a parking lot and you're oogling the bikes, you got that real low look. Now you go out on a road and you could hit a button and it, it filled with air, like, so, oh, now I could go for a ride, oh, I got a little, oh, that, that's nice. And then, you know, when you go back to oogle the bikes, let the air out of the seat. <laughs> now, you know and I know, I'm a really creative guy, <laughs> but that one might be over the top. And this is what the whole day has been like, just one... I've been waiting for it to stop raining so I could paint, and it just doesn't look like it's... I think I'm beating a dead horse. I'm beating a dead fish here. Luckily, the fish can go underwater so they don't get wet, but... Yeah, it does not look like a promising day. Uh, some days, you just can't win. Now, anytime you work with any plastic parts, this is the whole thing in a nutshell. It's got to say the word sealer. This protects the plastic against the urethane, the chemicals in urethane going down and make, turning it into either an alligator or a crocodile or a tarantula or whatever. This, this has worked. And Turbo Steve brought the first can of this, Dupla Color. I've tried Rust-Oleum brand. I prefer this if I had everything else equal. This seems to be a little easier to sand. Now, I did spend the better part of the day sanding it today while we were suffering through this rainy day. And right now, I want to see if that stuff is dried up. Mm. These have two coats of primer on them now. They're pretty much ready for some black paint. I've sanded it between coats. And the only problem right now is I've been waiting for the rain to stop. And I, I think today, we're basically at the end of the day for 
doing anything. It's just raining and it just and for the next couple of days it's supposed to rain so I'm hoping we're going to be able to get this done in the next couple of days. And over in my easel area I've been spending some spare time whenever time was available trying to sketch up and I'm, I wound up buying some of these. I haven't even used them yet. Some gold and silver pens I want to use. The next couple of days I made a pattern for that filler carbon fiber filler piece and I'm going to start thinking about how I want to do that. And what happens is that piece, when it's on this side of the motorcycle, it goes around the shock. It may have to have a curve in it. But having that area, I just think that'll be from a style point of view. That'll be one of the parts we're going to make. We'll probably be making other parts before this job is over. And we're certainly, the biggest part of the whole job is yet to be decided. The, the gold paint. And I have pigment from two different sources now. I just need a day that I can play with paint. And I just did one final check to see if it stopped raining, and it's supposed to rain until midnight. So I think we're going to end this video, and I hope you enjoyed this information. Use it. Some of the information is use it. We try to post some almost every day, and very soon we're going to be getting started on our restoration. So again, thanks for watching.